Anchor Steam Brewery, Poulter. too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Do you ever get one of them days where you just think, fuck it, I'm going to have a beer? Well that is today, and I've got one of these. It's the Anchor Brewery Porter. I'm sorry, but the way the fucking camera is angled, the labels are really hard to find, but there it is, that's what it looks like. Now the Anchor Brewery are from San Francisco in the United States, and they're one of these um, one of these breweries. They're one of these breweries that have um, have been around a hell of a long time, the mid 1800s, in fact, and it was founded by a German fella, and uh, they've gradually sort of grown and grown. And what I really like about this brewery is I've tried a few of their beers, and they were brewing. Beers that are popular now, they were brewing back years ago. And you've got to remember, and when I say years ago, I mean sort of the 70s and all this. And for example, this, they've called this an American Porter, all right? And I'll get onto what that is later, but they first brewed this in 1972. And you've got to think to yourself, well, at the time in America, beer, the only beer that was really popular back then was stuff like Budweiser and Miller Lite and all them light coloured lagers and they had the balls to brew a stout. Now, I might be talking out of my hat here, but I can imagine that was a pretty niche sort of beer back then. But they did it, and they've called it an American Porter, which I really like. Now, I'll contrast that with yesterday when I was reviewing a British Hellas, and it tasted bad. And I thought, well, why don't you just call it a British lager? Create your own style and own that style. And and I thought, you know, if you can own that style like the Americans have done with IPA, you can you can achieve great things. And no craft brewer seems to be doing that over here in the UK. You know, brewing your own British lager, calling it yeah, this is British lager. And you know, you can, for example, that one it was a Cavalors. It had a, a sour taste to it. And I thought, well, why not just create a new genre of of lager, call it British lager, and it'll be renowned for having a slightly sour taste. But I called it a Hellas, and it was nothing like a Hellas. Anyway, I'm going right off topic here. Let's get back to the beer. Okay, this is a 355 mil bottle, which I think is um, equivalent to a US pint or a US half pint. I know US pints and half pints are different. If you get a pint glass in America, it's different to a British pint glass. It's slightly smaller. So um, 355 mil, that seems to be the, um, the preferred measurement for American beers for some reason. Not sure why. Um, cue the dog barking, or is that a beer delivery? I will be back in a bit. Mm. Sadly, not a beer delivery. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, 355 mil bottle, 5.6% uh, in the volume, it's a porter, it doesn't say it on the front, but if you look on the website they say it's an American style porter. And they make some claims about the flavours, I'm not going to go into them here, I'll get onto that when I try the beer. So let's get it open and let's see what's in the bottle. Here is the cap that is in keeping with most of the anchor caps. Um, I'm getting coffee notes from here and the glasses down there. On the nose, out of the bowl. 
yeah sweet coffee if you can imagine that sweet caramel and coffee it smells intriguing let's get it into the glass now this came out of the fridge I've let it warm up slightly I want to get all of them flavors in there just put that down there. Here it is. In the glass. Two finger. Beige head. Huge bubbles. Can you see the size of them bubbles? They are just mahoosive. And I'm thinking that that is going to dissipate quite rapidly. So let's have a sniff out the glass. More caramel. Hell of a lot of caramel on that. Sweet, there's a sweet sort of note to it as well. Could be sweet chocolate. It does smell nice. Let's get it down the hatch before the um, before the head disappears. Cheers. Not bad. First thing I notice, very nice mouthfeel. Very nice, light mouthfeel. Tons of coffee and dark chocolate on the back end of that. In the mouth, a fair bit of caramel too. Not bad, let's go again. Surprisingly easy drinking on this, but there is a huge bitter chocolate and coffee back end on this. And despite that, it's got a very nice light mouthfeel. Not like a stout at all. It's <clears throat> a stout, you, you know you're drinking a stout and it goes down. Even some porters as well, I've, noticed you do get that really full mouthfeel from the oats that are in it but on this it's quite light there's a sweetness to it as well bitter sweet if you can imagine it slightly sweet flavors of caramel chocolate coffee I'm even getting a touch of vanilla on that but then as it goes down the arse end is just huge bit of chocolate coffee and that lingers and it's quite nice as I say I've not had a bad one from the anchor brewery I've tried the Liberty Ale I've tried their steam beer and I've tried their lager and I have to say all of them were pretty good this is not an exception. This is quite nice. Um, I've tasted better porters yet, I have. I have to admit that. But this isn't a bad one. I do quite like this. I'd say it's slightly sweeter than all the other porters that I've tried. You know, especially British porters. British porters can be quite bitter. You know, you get bitter toffee malt, bitter caramel. Sorry, bitter toffee malt and bitter chocolate malt. On here, you're getting a touch of caramel, a touch of toffee as well. But the big flavours in this are chocolate, bitter dark chocolate and coffee. But there's a sweetness to it as well that runs through it. And I do get like a touch of vanilla. Not massive, but I can I can faintly detect it in there. But it's quite nice. 
I have to say, it is not bad. Very easy drinking. So what's the verdict? Well, um, they've called this an American Porter. And I will give them that. It is definitely different to most of the Porters that I've tried. So this is a style, in effect. And what I'm getting from it is a sweetness that you don't find on other Porters. Or that I've not certainly found on other Porters anyway. And I think it's really nice, it's very drinkable, lots of toffee, lots of caramel, chocolate and coffee. That's that's the big flavours, not much hop bitterness in it at all, even though there is a, there's a single hop in it and for the life of me I can't remember what the hop is, but you're not getting that real bitterness. Most of that is coming from the roasted malt that's in this. But it's nice, I like it. I'm going to give that, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I'd recommend it just so as you try it. If you're not a fan of porters, this is slightly sweeter. Now, I'm not saying it's like a, a pastry stout or anything like that by any stretch of the imagination. It's not sugar sweet. It's just naturally sweeter. And carbonation on it is quite nice as well. The mouthfeel is really good, which is making it super drinkable. And to be honest, I've got no complaints. There's no nasties in that at all. Um, Porter isn't my favourite style of beer, I will admit that. But this is a nice one. And that's why I'll give it an 8 out of 10. And I recommend it. I got it from Beers of Europe. It was quite cheap. I think it was under £3. And it's worth checking out. And uh, this was the first Porter brewed in America after Prohibition. So it's got a, you know, a claim to fame. And it's nice. Yeah, 8 out of 10. Recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.